Okay, so this year, back to school supplies will include face masks, hand sanitizer, disinfectant, if you can find them in the stores, all to protect our children. But there are a few other things that we can arm our families with to keep them healthy. Dr. Ken Redcross, he is author of Bond, the four cornerstones of a lasting and caring relationship with your doctor. And he joins us today for some back to school health advice for families. Good morning. Good morning, Betty. Happy Friday. I know the last Friday of summer it just shows you how far we've come this year in a pandemic. Absolutely. But you know, let, let's take a look back, shall we, doctor? Because we talked with you at the beginning of the pandemic when your town, New oh, yeah. Rochelle, was really a hot zone. Um, boy, things have changed, right? Oh, they really have. You think being a parent was hard before. Um, now we're trying to figure out how to manage our anxiety, everyone. So even as a physician, just so you know, I get it. And so we need to figure out how we are going to manage that. I think one of the first important things, Betty, is to remember, look, there's going to be some start and some stops. Once again, back here in New Rochelle, we had 100 kids out partying in the woods. Yeah. And so we had to kind of change what we were doing here, Betty. So I, I get it. So but with the starts and stops, that that's one, you know, layer of this, if you will. But the other yeah. is people and parents trying to get their kids ready for going back to school. I mean, New York has been delayed a little bit. They were supposed to go back on Monday. Now it's a little iffy. But how do you protect your children? What do you send them off with, both educational-wise and tangibly? What items should you send them off to school with? Well, not only just protecting them, because we know about the hand washing, we know about the social distancing, and definitely the mask, but also as a family, you got to kind of hit the pause button, Betty, and look at your specific situation, because there's not one size that kind of fits all. For instance, look at your situation in the home. I take care of two 90-year-old patients, so mm -hmm. our parents, I should say, so I need to decide, does it make sense for my kids to actually go to school and come back? So you really have to sit down as a family and decide, what are we going to do that's best for us along the way? And making sure that we're taking care of our kids' health and making sure that we're eating right and doing all the things that are important, such as getting rest for them as well. Right. Uh, you're also a parent of two preteens. Um, so how do you make... I, I want to get inside your head. How did you make that yeah. decision? And what decision did you make based on the scenario that you're facing? You know, for me, everyone, I had to follow the science. I had to decide, did I really feel careful, uh, happy, and comfortable with the situation at the school? Look, I live in a great school district, but once again, as a parent, it's my job to make sure I'm making the best decisions for everyone. So for us, we're a big kind of holistic family. So we talk about, about the importance of nutrition. I mentioned things like vitamin D, which has some good information out there for viruses, it's in general. So I make sure that we kind of have like almost a, a summit together as a family and even with our bubble around us as well, Betty. Very important to kind of build that system in your communities. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's also a concern too because when we hear about all these teachers catching the coronavirus before schools have even opened, that is like a red flag. And then, then you couple that with, uh, you know, children getting COVID-19 and the multi-system inflammatory syndrome, which we still don't know a lot about. So how, how do we dive into that part of it and protect our kids? Now, Betty, you hit a very important point. Look, we here in New York, we're the melting pot. And one thing we're seeing in studies is that African Americans and Latinos in particular have been having a very difficult time with the coronavirus, and especially children. It's because social distancing is an absolute luxury here for us. And it's also because only about 20% of African Americans have jobs where they can telecommute. So therefore, they're going to work, they're on the front lines, mm -hmm. and we're coming back home as well. So a lot of different challenges that gets back, Betty, to that importance of making sure you have a family plan mm -hmm. as to what we can do and what works best for you and yours. Yeah, and, I, and you had mentioned it earlier. I've heard it from other doctors as well. Vitamin D, if you can up that, that's going to be very helpful, right? Very important, everyone. Look, vitamin D isn't a treatment for the coronavirus, but recognize vitamin D is incredibly important to help for your immune system, for your immune health. And the studies also show, one just came across my desk this morning, that the studies that were under 20 as far as your vitamin D level were mm -hmm. more associated with positive COVID tests. Wow. So once again, a lot of good data coming out, but that's one thing you can do for your family and for your yeah. children is talk about getting your vitamin D levels up. Yeah, and peace of mind as well. All right, Dr. Red Cross, as always, we appreciate having you on the show. Thanks for coming back. Oh, thanks for having me, Betty. Stay well uh, and have a blessed weekend, everybody. You too.